Hi, Mike Smith here. Recently I posted a video demonstrating a WordPress or website plugin for creating a close question. And for language teaching, what that basically means is a, a gap fill kind of question, as you can see here. Now I've developed that a little bit further and more uh, sophisticatedly integrated that with my WordPress website. Now what I want to do now is demonstrate it again and offer, if any uh, language teachers out there want this functionality on their website, then they can simply contact me and I'll help them to integrate it into their website. This may become a WordPress plugin at some stage in the future, but at this stage um, I don't have time to do that. So uh, I'm happy to help people integrate it into their website. There are a few functions within this uh, tool set that uh, make it a little bit difficult to turn it into a standard WordPress plugin. Um, so let's demonstrate how this works. Okay, so to explain how this quiz works, we've, we're going back to the original text here. And the idea is to define gaps uh, with hints and uh, predefined answers for some of these um, key words. For example, this one here is a multi-word phrasal verb, and then uh, uh, down here is a, another rather unusual verb as well. So words like that throughout the text we're going to define as being the subjects of this gap or close. Okay, so I'm just going to build the close here, press that button, um, and uh, you'll see that the keywords that have been predefined are initially highlighted here. And we can, we can turn that off if we like, um, toggle the highlighting. Uh, if we want to make it into a printable gap fill, what we can do is uh, turn on the gaps and then turn off the terms. As you can see what I've done there, Those, that's the term there and that's the gap. Um, these gaps are automatically numbered um, and uh, we can have it just like that so that the uh, student can uh, make, a, make, a, make a guess without much support. If we want to give them a bit of support, we can uh, show the options there in brackets. So these are just toggle, toggleable options here. And then we can just print this page out. So it can be a, a, a printable close. However, if we want to make it an online quiz, we can get a little bit more clever. So I'll just toggle those options off, toggle the gaps, turn the terms back on here, got up to here. Right, so what we can now do is also insert um, pull down menus instead of those uh, gaps that we had before, and in those pull-down menus are the alternatives from which the student has to choose. Um, so what I'll do is I'll get rid of that the terms then. So now we've just got the numbered gaps, but they're pull-down menus. And um, in addition to that, we've also got uh, hints. So we're trying to steer the student to the correct choice of term here. Um, so we can do a hint there. And then if they choose, they can check whether the answer is correct or not. Now at the moment, these unchosen close uh, questions here are highlighted in red, which indicate that the correct answer has not yet been selected. Um, so if I press check close here, that will remain red because um, it's not the correct answer. But if I select the correct one, and then check the close, it goes to a green highlight. So that's the uh, initial feedback. But let's imagine that the student got stuck on this and checked the close and couldn't, couldn't um, figure out why this one is wrong. So then the hint is here, but maybe they want a bit more information, an explanation of what answer is actually right, and also why the other answers are wrong. So in this case here, there's further information, um, and this, you know, this can be toggled on or off. This text is under the control of the teacher designing the quiz, um, and these controls just simply provide a convenient way to display this information. Okay, so in addition to that, um, you can also submit the correct term, which was got up to there. I'll just check that there, yep, okay, that's green. Um, and take that, that correct term and submit it to a number of websites for, um, for a dictionary definition or a concordance 
analysis. And, and you just press this button here. Um, this will open a new window and it will submit that phrasal verb there with these spaces in. And as you can see, it uh, there's, there's a few um, useful websites here that um, um, are pre-programmed into this site. So this is Reverso, which is useful. Uh, there's also NetSpeak, Just the Word, uh, Wiki, Simple Wiki, Wikipedia, and Wiktionary. Wiktionary is quite good for phrasal verbs. Um, there's Dictionary.com, Thesaurus.com. Not so good for this phrasal verb. WordNick, which is interesting for advanced writing. Again, not very useful for this particular phrasal verb. And then some concordance tools. Okay, so uh, that, as you can see at the top there, that opened in a new tab. It's also possible to open it on the page. I'll just demonstrate that. So the same uh, embedded search functions are going to open in a window down here. As you can see, it's the same information. Okay. Um, right, so I'll just tidy that up close all that up and um, obviously also uh, in addition to checking answers you can also see the correct answers there. Um, so that basically uh, allows the teacher to, to um, provide an online quiz to their students with hints and those hints can be very simple or they can be full of multimedia as is shown here. Um, you can also have it so that on this website, for example, in this case, the ex further explanation is in fact dependent on the student logging into your website. So on my website, I've got um, a membership plugin, and that allows me to, um, you know, encourage students to become members on my site, or perhaps even to pay a fee for this further explanation. So all of those functions are possible as well. And um, in addition to that. Um, this this button here, as you can see on the top left here, um, many many WordPress websites have a sidebar, um, and so I've just added this little toggle button here to allow us to use the full width of the defined um, page on that website, and that that makes a bit more sense here. So um, that's one of the aspects that would make it difficult to make this a standard WordPress plugin because it depends on the theme. Okay, so um, that is the, a demonstration of how the um, how the close function actually works from a from a teacher's and a student's point of view. Okay, so the next step, of course, is to describe how the teacher actually creates um, these gaps and um, these hints. So I'm just going to quickly present how that happens. There are two ways to do it. Um, in this case here, we've got uh, a fairly simple hint, and then we've got uh, a little bit more complex um, explanation. And the way that that's done, um, so that's for, let's see, oh, here we go. Okay, so the actual word in the text was got up to. What I've done is I've wrapped it in span tag here, um, and I've given it a class, close, and that allows my background software to say, ah, yes, I want to replace this text with all of these features. Um, this data A, B, C, and D are the options. As you can see, data C is got up to there. Um, and the answer, data answer here, is got up to. So that tells the software what the answer actually is. And as you can see, the hint for the text is there between those quotation marks and the, the text for the phrasal verb is is here and um, within this um, um, format we can do limited HTML formatting like with a line break there but not much more sophisticated than that and then finally there is also a term def definition for the search function and that's important it might not be a good idea to search for a verb directly because um, the verbs change tense. So for example here, got up to, um, the correct way to search for that would actually be get up to. That's the infinitive of that verb. So that's why that's a separate definition. And so that there generated this. Uh, the software does that automatically. And um, these terms that are defined in these data sets here 
are automatically populated into the pull down menu and also into um, the printable options as well. So that's uh, the simplest way to do hints and explanation. Okay, if you want to get a little fancier than that, for example, uh, to embed multimedia, we can't quite do it in the same way, but there is an alternative. As you can see here, I've got multimedia in um, in the in the hint, um, and there would also be in the explanation if we were logged in. Um, but let me just show you how this works. Okay, so okay. Um, this is the word here, Tinker. Um, the first part is very similar to the previous example. Uh, we give it a class close so the software knows, ah yes, I want to do something with this word and turn it into a, a gap fill close. And then uh, we, we give the options, the alternatives here and the answer. Um, and then instead of uh, directly embedding the hint text as we do up here, we point to another area on the web page where that information sits and in this case you can see hint tinker refers to this area here id hint tinker and in there we can do whatever html we like and in this case we've got an iframe to a youtube video uh, so so uh, you can have video or audio uh, you can have tables you can have whatever you like in there and similarly for the explanation um, that's there as well a uh, similar kind of thing um, in addition to that, as I mentioned previously, you can also integrate it to into your um, subscription plugin, if you like, on WordPress and allow this content to be hidden unless someone is logged in. So uh, that allows us to do multimedia in our hints and explanation. Okay, integration of the close quiz plugin into your WordPress website will depend on the theme that you have on your website. Um, in my case, I run a theme framework called Thesis, um, and uh, essentially what I need to do is um, add some programming code to the bottom of this page. And in, in my case, in this um, fr theme framework, um, I, I, I use uh, the theme editor to enter this code. This is the code here. Um, at the foot of the page and that then takes care of creating the quiz. Um, your theme might be similar, it might be different, but effectively that that uh, JavaScript code there needs to be inserted somewhere into your theme. And in addition to that, we also need to make some changes to um, the CSS to control the appearance, uh, which is all totally customizable, but um, in my case that's down here. Yeah, so this CSS here is for the closed styles. Okay, so the JavaScript code and the CSS appearance styles have to be integrated into your WordPress website. Um, and then also the names of um, these functions here, for example, this one to control the visibility of the sidebar, they also need to be integrated as well. And that will depend on your theme. Uh, so that's why it's a manual integration at this stage. But just contact me if you'd like this function to be added to your website. A close is a very powerful way to teach language and also to test language. In the future, we'll also be adding uh, multiple choice and uh, other types of questions um, to this close quiz. Thanks very much.